the labor process uh, in uh, Eastern Partnership, Russia and Norway. Uh, uh, so as you already know, uh, Norway uh, does not have uh, uh, currently a European, so, uh, I mean, it's a European Solidarity Court national agency. So we are taking care of the accreditation process also in, in uh, this country in cooperation with our Norwegian uh, colleagues, uh, luckily. And uh, so basically everything I'll be talking about will apply to so-called uh, partner countries. I, I will underline uh, very clearly. Uh, and uh, well, let's start. The quality labor awarding process, or shortly called accreditation, uh, is, uh, is a very important part of the of the whole program because it's actually an entry ticket to the to participate in a in a program, and it ensures that all the partners involved in projects they have the same notion understanding. Uh, uh, regarding the the program the cooperation the work with volunteers and they have a basic understanding knowledge of the principles objectives policy standards of european solidarity corp program so just a very short reminding what are those priorities so we're talking inclusion diversity environmental protection uh digital youth work uh, participation in democratic life uh, and uh, support in the field of health. And all of this interconnected by this uh, so notion of solidarity that, that Barbara was uh, uh, explaining to us in her presentation. So we need to really think about how these priorities uh, uh, should be uh, involved in our acti activities when we are thinking about actually already applying for quality label. Uh, there are also those important characteristics, and I will underline here learning as a as a very crucial part of the European Solidarity Corps volunteering project. Learning of participants is uh, the non-formal and informal methods and recognition and validation of learning outcomes are very crucial parts of, of these volunteering projects. Uh, next to uh, other, uh, other aspects as a European added value and international dimension of these projects. And what is also very important and very often forgotten, it's a dissemination of project results and promotion of the program. So let's not forget about that. About this, that uh, our responsibility as beneficiaries of the program is also to promote the program, show the results of our project to others, and in this way also allowing other people learn about it and benefit from it. Uh, very, uh, uh, very technical aspects of the program. I mean, of the of the plan for quality label. Uh, if some of you never participated in Erasmus Plus. Solidarity Corps will need to first register the organization organization registration system and obtain a so-called organization ID, OID. Uh, here is the link uh, to the registration. I'll share the presentation later on so you can also uh, go through it uh, in your own speed and, and see how this process looks like. Basically, once you register to your organization, you have OID, you're able to apply for, uh, for the application. Uh, I mean, apply for quality label. So uh, there is a new quality label form called ESC 50. Uh, and uh, before it was ESC 52, now it's e e ESC 50. And uh, this uh, form, uh, um, once you, you insert your all, all ID, it will be filled up with the, all the uh, basic information about your organization that you have already inserted while registering your organization. But the rest of the uh, rest part of the application, you will need to uh, fill in yourself. You don't need to immediately complete the whole application and submit it. Uh, it will be saved as a draft and you can come back to it slowly and uh, fill it up as uh, you uh, develop your concept of quality label. Uh, it's next to the application before submitting it, you should also upload a few documents. It's a declaration of honor, which is just one page of the application itself that should be signed by a legal representative of the organization. 
it's a legal entity form. It's a standard form which is required in case of all the projects of the uh, commission and a weekly schedule of tasks for volunteers in case you're applying for a hosting role. It's uh, also highly appreciated if it's being submitted to the application already. The applications should be submitted to the Polish National Agency. It applies for the Eastern Partnership countries, for Russia and for Norway. Program countries apply to the program countries. And our organizations from other neighboring regions, they apply to their regional SALTAs, so SALTA, Western Balkans, and SALTA Euromed. Uh, when you will be, this is a very important thing, when you will be submitting a quality label, you will uh, see a notification that you're applying to wrong national agency, to not your national agency. Please ignore this notification. It's, uh, it's just a warning sign, it will not block the application process. And once you submitted your application, you should wait for an email from SALTA. If you do not receive it for a long time, it may ha have happened that your application got stuck somewhere. So feel free also to contact SALTA in order to ask whether we have received your application. Uh, application can be submitted on a continuous basis, basis throughout the year. But uh, with the end of the year, the current application will not be available. In January 2022, there will be a new application. So it's just good to remember that, uh, that the application is, uh, is changing with the end of every year. So this is about uh, the very technical aspect of the quality label process. Moving to what you can actually apply for, applying for quality label, there are uh, three roles, supporting hosting and the new one, Lead. So supporting role is a role that allows organization to send volunteers abroad, to uh, prepare them before departure, uh, support them during the project and help them when they come back to the country to come back to the local reality. Uh, second role is a hosting role and uh, organization holding this role can uh, receive volunteers. Uh, in their premises, they can uh, work with them, involving them in their activities. And uh, is such an organization is responsible for providing volunteers with all the logistical support, including uh, accommodation, uh, local transport, uh, food if it's possible. Uh, uh, they are also responsible for providing them tasks, support, during their uh, work, as well as uh, personal support, including support of a mentor, language support, and uh, evaluation uh, support, uh, different kinds of uh, methods that would help volunteers also to just uh, face the new, uh, to face easily the new situation, culture shock, etc. The last role, so lead role, uh, is a role dedicated specifically and only to applying for grants and coordinating projects. Without this role, organization cannot apply for grant. And this role serves only for this, to apply for grants and manage the projects that organization uh, is uh, being uh, coordinating. So a bit more about this lead role, it's only for program countries. Uh, and organization needs to have a hosting and supporting role as, as well uh, in order to have the lead role. And it needs to prove that has enough uh, operational uh, capacity, financial capacity in order to manage uh, projects in the long term. Uh, for minimum three years. However, in general, such um, uh, quality level for lead role is being awarded for, uh, minimum, for uh, seven years. Uh, one clarification, in case we have someone from program countries here, uh, if you have a quality label for a hosting or a supporting role, but not for a lead role, and you would like to apply for grant now. There is a possibility to apply for a lead role only using this ESC 50 form and submit it to your national agency. 
Please remember that without this lead role, you're not able to apply for a, quality, uh, for a grant right now. Take into account this May deadline. So this is very important. However, for more details, please contact your national agency because uh, this, uh, this is uh, quite a complicated process. And since um, it does not apply to regional saltos, uh, I am not the best person to answer your questions, most probably. How does the accreditation procedure looks like uh, uh, in the Eastern Partnership, Russia and Norway? Uh, so first of all, when we receive the application, the application is being uh, verified, uh, uh, verified, uh, taking into account uh, the, 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 its eligibility. So we, uh, we do formal verification and if something isn't clear or some documents are missing, we are contacting the organization asking uh, for uh, completing it and giving a deadline to submit those documents or uh, uh, send additional uh, information. Uh, if uh, everything is okay, we inform organization that we are moving to the next stage of the accreditation process, which is an accreditation meeting. So the meeting is being organized usually in the premises of the organization with at least the coordinator of the organization. Uh, we highly appreciate uh, the, um, the presence of uh, also of the um, legal uh, representative of the organization. However, if more members of the organization want to join, we are very happy about it. it uh, it's, a, it's, it's a, an example of a high motivation of the organization also to obtain the quality label. Um, during such a meeting, we will be talking about your application. We'll be talking about um, practical aspects of, uh, of uh, your organization, of uh, implementing the project. Uh, we would like to learn uh, how much you know about the program, how, how well you understand it. And we would like to see your office and the places where you're going to work with volunteers. Uh, if volunteers are going to work in more places, perhaps a creditor would like to see them as well. Uh, in justified cases, uh, accreditation meetings are organized online. Uh, during last year, because of the pandemic, 60% uh, of our accreditations happened online. Uh, however, we would like to come back to the on-the-spot visits because it's, uh, I think it's, uh, in general, much better and much nicer way to accredit an organization. Um, after the meeting, uh, we may still ask you to send us some more information if something was unclear. It may happen that, for example, application was missing some inf important information. We may ask you to add them uh, via email, for example. Uh, if you were accredited before and hosted volunteers or send them, uh, we may uh, want to talk to them about their experience. So we may ask you for contact your uh, volunteers as well. Uh, so usually after accreditation meeting, there is still some time where we are collecting necessary information before the accreditor who is going to meet you. Uh, because I didn't mention we work with a team of uh, 22 uh, experts from different countries that usually do the accreditation meetings. So, uh, so this accreditor is preparing a report that is being sent to SALTO ECA. The final decision is being done by SALTO. Uh, however, uh, all our decisions and reports have to be accepted by the evaluation committee and board of directors in our foundation. I'm mentioning it because it's an um, additional, a very important step in the accreditation process. It's important also because it kind of slows down the whole process. Uh, the disapproval uh, may take two or three weeks additionally. So uh, after accreditation meeting, it may still take uh, another month to send you accreditation decision. So uh, it's good to be aware of this. Uh, once everything is being approved, the uh, SALTO is sending you the final decision regarding your quality label application. What is being assessed exactly? Uh, so your motivation. 
to, to, to work in, in the program. Your experience. Uh, well, it's great if you had some international experience before, however, it's not necessary. Uh, it's great if you worked with volunteers, even if they were only local volunteers. In general, we would like to learn more about your work. We would like to learn more about the staff of your organization, their skills, uh, their experience, about uh, your office, the conditions you can offer to volunteers. And uh, we would like to learn more about your work on the local level. So uh, what do you do on a daily basis? Uh, with whom you work? Do you have access to, uh, to, to you that you would like to send uh, abroad, for example? Um, how do you work? Uh, do you have partners? Do you cooperate with partners in your town, in your uh, region, on the national level, maybe on international level? Uh, how well do you know the program? How well do you understand it? It's very important that before accreditation visits, you at least read the program guide, which is available on the website for everyone, and it's translated to, to, to many languages. Um, what is your idea? Actually, what are your ideas to work in a European Solidarity Corps? So what kind of, especially when it comes to hosting volunteers, what kind of tasks you want to give them? How do you want to work with them? And finally, how you want to support volunteers? Uh, let's remember about this importance of the learning aspect of the program. Uh, let's remember about the importance of uh, providing volunteers with uh, safe conditions and uh, about uh, in general uh, high quality of, uh, of provided uh, support. Uh, the new application form is asking um, questions about your capacity as an organization. So uh, you will need to explain what resources will you engage, what human resources, what material resources you're going to engage in the program, in your projects, in the future projects. Uh, what is your ability to find partners? Do you have partners? Do you know how to find partners? Are you willing to work internationally and to maintain uh, a good, good long-term cooperation with your partners? And uh, do you have, uh, what, what ideas uh, do you have in case of serious changes in your organization? Let's imagine a situation that you are uh, right now managing a project, but uh, the coordinator for organization is leaving, a director for organization is leaving. Your organization is uh, undergoing a serious structural changes. It's good to have it in your mind how you're going to face it in such a situation in order to not seriously disturb the, the project that is going on. So all of this you will need to uh, rethink and explain in your application. Application is also um, now asking a very specific questions about activities. So before this option was only optional, right now it's a, this part is obligatory for every organization and you will really need to explain uh, how you wanna work with volunteers. I mean, what kind of tasks you, you want to offer them. It's not only a very general, profile of the task, but actually what they are going to do. What is, what, uh, how do you identify the need for this kind of activities, for this work camp, for this workshop, uh, for, uh, for these classes? Uh, how uh, this, um, how your local community is going to benefit from these activities, how volunteers are going to benefit from them. And how is it interconnected with the priorities of the program? What is the solidarity aspect of it? It's, it's a lot of questions. And I imagine that you will have several activities that you will uh, want to involve your volunteers in. So for each of these activities, you will need to, you will need to find uh, these answers. Uh, and a, a request from my side, it's, it's important that you also mention for which type of projects you would like to uh, uh, 
design these activities. If it's long-term activities, if it's short-term volunteering, or maybe it's uh, volunteering teams. Because uh, uh, with all these groups, you'll be working a little bit differently. You will involve them in a bit different types of activities. So, so it also uh, gives us a really uh, an answer to a question whether you really understand what you want to do with volunteers, why you want to host volunteering teams, or why you want to work with short-term volunteers, not with long-term volunteers. So it's good to think about this uh, aspect. Uh, each activity has to be linked to a location. So there is like an, a new aspect of a quality label. For those of you who uh, did not apply for a quality label before, you have um, accreditation. You, you, you didn't have this question before, so this is also a novelty. Uh, basically, each organization has at least one location. It's your office by default. Uh, however, you can add more locations. A location, hosting location, is the place where your volunteers will work. Uh, so uh, it can be uh, your office. It can be your second office in another town. Uh, it can be a venue of your uh, work camp. It can be also a place where you work on a regular basis. Let's say a library, for example, where you work as an organization uh, regularly and you own these activities. It's very important. Um, what does it mean owning the activities? Well, it means that this is not a library's activity. It means that you have designed these activities. You run them uh, regularly, uh, two, three times a week. And uh, it's, it's being supervised by members of your organization. So you do not send a volunteer to another organization. You, it's, actually, uh, it's actually your activity that volunteers is being involved in. Um, in a previous workshop, uh, 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 in the previous hour I've been running, I have received a lot of questions regarding this aspect because each of you has a bit different style of work. You cooperate with different local partners and there are many very specific questions, whether it's okay to send volunteers to schools or uh, to other organizations. Uh, but in general, each it's, it's very important. If, a, a, if an A organization wants to host a volunteer, they, they should obtain a quality label. So it's not okay to send volunteers to other organizations as a rule. However, if a volunteer is supposed to run a workshop for one hour, once a week, it's uh, questionable. So if you have any very specific question regarding this aspect, I would like to uh, encourage you to just uh, send me an email and ask, ask a question. At the end of my presentation, there will be my email address. So this can be, this can be discussed because each case is very much different and has to be re re thought. Uh, sometimes many times to discuss with my colleagues as well. Uh, so, um, okay, we can slowly move to the next uh, phase. So what can be um, a result of a accreditation process? It's a decision. Decision can be in general, positive or negative. Uh, we can give uh, something I call the fully positive decision, which means that we can and accept uh, the, all the requests regarding the roles, uh, the hosting limits and the hosting locations. However, also we can give you uh, organization a positive decision, however, changing certain conditions. Like uh, we can give uh, only a supporting role, even though organization applies for hosting and supporting. We can uh, lower number of hosted volunteers if we think that organization is not ready to work with this big number of volunteers or is not able to provide them with enough uh, work. Uh, and we can also reject locations. Uh, we usually reject location because of um, um, uh, eligibility of this location. Just deciding that this is not location, for example, this institution should apply for their own uh, quality label. We always explain our decisions and we give recommendations. 
And this also happens in case of a negative decision. So uh, if we give a negative decision, we always clarify what are the reasons and uh, we encourage organization with recommendation how they can improve their project ideas and, um, and they can submit the application in three months, minimum three months. Uh, the new program uh, is putting a very strong emphasis on a monitoring process of projects. Uh, well, uh, quality label applications are being awarded for seven years. It's a very long period of time and a lot make uh, happen uh, during this time in our organization. That's why we are being encouraged by the commission to um, regularly uh, assess organizations that are holding quality label. So uh, we will be doing this for sure. Uh, always we contact organization, tell them that we would like to visit them. Usually the topic of, the quality, uh, the, of this uh, quality labor monitoring visit is in order to see where the quality standards are being maintained, whether organization is implementing the activities that they uh, mentioned in the application and that were agreed during accreditation visit and uh, whether the hosting limits, for example, are being uh, maintained. Uh, however, it may also happen that we organize a monitoring visit, um, we can call it interventional, in case we learn uh, about uh, some uh, serious underperformance. For example, we receive regular complaints from volunteers, uh, repetitive, that regard the same thing we may organize also a monitoring visit. Uh, but as my, uh, the same as in case of this periodic assessment, uh, organization is being always contacted in advance. They can prepare for a visit. And, uh, and such a monitoring is also organizing on the, organized on the spot with our external experts. Uh, what can be a result of a monitoring visit? It can be just um, a letter with recommendation. Uh, we can also send a warning to organization and inform them that uh, we are putting them under observation, whether uh, they are uh, keeping the recommendations, following our recommendations. Uh, it may happen that we suspend the quality labor for some time, so organization will not be able to implement projects and take part in new projects. Uh, and uh, in the most serious cases, we can terminate quality label. So uh, what happens very rarely also to, uh, to, to uh, inform your voters in advance. Uh, about the validity of quality label, as I have mentioned in general, um, quality label is valid for seven years. Uh, organization organizations that received quality label before 2021. So after 2018, we started awarding organizations with quality label, will have valid quality labels till 2027. Uh, and organizations that were awarded with accreditation, in this accreditation during Erasmus Plus program, they are valid till the end of 2021. And important information in case your accreditation uh, is going to expire next year, uh, because you have uh, EVS accreditation and you are uh, running, uh, starting running a project this year, hosting volunteers. It's very important to make sure that you will not have a break in validity of your accreditation. If your volunteers are arriving in September and are going to stay till September 2022, you should, in the meantime, apply for a quality label to make sure that you will have a quality label starting from January 2022. That's very important. So uh, that's my general uh, request, a call to organizations uh, whose accreditations are expiring. Please do not wait till the last moment. In general, this year, we are receiving many applications and the process is being quite long. Please take into account that accreditation awarding process takes around three months. So uh, do not wait till the last moment, do not wait till December. Uh, apply earlier, uh, every, everyone will be more calm that we will make it on time. 
Uh, that would be the end of my presentation. Uh, as I said, I will share it with you. Um, uh, here are some links. So this is a link to the uh, quality label, uh, I mean, to the European Solidarity Core website, as well as to Salter. Eastern Europe and Caucasus website where our process of accreditation is explained and below is my uh, email address. I'm responsible for quality label in Asalto, so I'm the, the right person to ask questions. So the question whether it's necessary to hold a quality label already for May deadline. Well, organizations that have valid accreditations, uh, meaning EVS accreditations, uh, you can still be partners in uh, projects um, in May and in, um, and in October on basis of these uh, accreditations. You do not need quality labels. So uh, if, if this was the question. However, you need a quality label for a lead, lead role if you want to apply uh, for grant. But this applies only to program countries, organizations from program countries. Uh, then um, next question, is it possible that hosting organization is from capital, but they want to implement short-term EC projects in a rural area? Uh, it very much depends where do you want to implement this project. If this is your premises, this can be your hosting location. For example, it's your office in a village. If this is going to be a completely different uh, organization, not really, then it won't be possible. But if you have a very specific question and you want to give me the better description of the case, just please uh, send me an email. Uh, when we apply for quality label, it means that we apply for a certificate, which will let us participate in a wide range of volunteering activities, right? Right. How can we specify the activities when the label just lets us organize different types of volunteering activities, which will have different topics and different um, agenda? Um, uh, well, in... Uh, I have right now a chaos in my head and I'm trying to somehow uh, uh, organize my answer to this question. I'm, to be honest, I'm also not really, uh, really sure um, how to answer. Maybe, maybe Guram uh, could uh, clarify more uh, what she meant uh, by this. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I'll just uh, see the screen I have captured. So you have, uh, like in the beginning, oh, let me just, yeah, it was, uh, sorry. So there was a talk, something like uh, writing the weekly timetables while uh, applying for quality label, yeah? Uh, or, yes. let us go. Yeah, yeah, it was in the beginning, how to apply for quality label, and there's like uh, six steps. And the, the fourth step was upload necessary documents, weekly schedule of tasks for volunteers, declaration of honor, legal entity form. So mainly I, the question was about this weekly schedule of tasks. So uh, when we have quality label, we can apply for different projects. Yes. And those different projects doesn't have the uh, the same like weekly timetable. That's why I asked like, how can I? I understand. Yeah. Well, so, uh, Basically, this weekly timetable uh, should be more treated as an exercise for you. Uh, and as, as some very general information. We do not require that uh, when you submit this application, uh, this, this weekly timetable, it means uh, that uh, till the end of your relative quality level, you're uh, allowed only to, to uh, keep this kind of uh, activities uh, uh, and do them weekly in the same way. It is more uh, to, to really rethink how, how you see involvement of volunteers and, and taking into account that they need to be involved weekly by for between 30 and 35 hours in your activities. And how do you see uh, they work in the organization? Uh, so we, we do not check if this is going to really happen. Uh, we, we, we want to more understand what, uh, what, what form of activities they're going to be involved and, uh, uh, and in what uh, amount of hours. I don't know if this is clear. 
Yeah, yeah, I got the point. So it's more like general universal description, how we will distribute their time and how we will be in touch with them. I think like this, so some kind of universal. Yes, yes. And you have mentioned that kind of recommended uh, hours they should spend working with the organization is like 30 to 35 hours. Yeah. Yes, weekly. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, are there more? Okay. Yes, you can check. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you can jump to the end of the chat. So. Uh, mm, no, no. Right now, if you're from a program country, uh, you and you would like to apply for a grant, you need to have a quality labor for lead role. Mm, it's requirement. So uh, you can contact your national agency for more information. But as I said, uh, the the form is the same. It's the European Solidarity for ESC fifty. Forum. And it's still available on the old platform uh, where there used to be the previous uh, uh, forms for accreditation and for quality label. Uh, could you please extend a little bit more about the timeline of quality label accreditation? How much time does it take after submitting the application? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, basically, uh, basically, after you submit the application, um, it may take uh, two, three weeks in, in general uh, until we, we, we contact you. Right now, um, Right now, however, we are not receiving any applications. Uh, and I am wondering whether there is a bug uh, in the system. But, uh, but since the end of March, we didn't receive anything. So I am, I am wondering if, if any one of you have uh, applied, please let me know about it. Um, uh, later on, uh, if, uh, if there are any problems, I mean, if there are any issues regarding uh, eligibility of the application, we are, uh, you're receiving an email and uh, you, you get three weeks to clarify issues, submit additional documents and etc. And uh, if everything is okay, uh, your application is being uh, redirected to external expert who has um, on average a month and a half to implement uh, um, accreditation meeting with you. Afterwards, um, afterwards, there are some uh, two more weeks for submitting the report form, and two up to three weeks for the um, for the official uh, for the bureaucratic part uh, uh, regarding the evaluation committee that is uh, approving all the applications. 